with me to a place of wondrous contradictions. A place that is silent and unstirring, yet restless and alive. A place of untold peace and boundless dread. Come with me into the very cradle of darkness, where those who dwell, dwell alone. This is the domain of a writer, a place where words and ideas should dance upon the page. Unfortunately, the writer who lives here is Clayton Wagner, a former best-selling author whose one great novel was seven years ago. Now forced to accept whatever petty assignments are thrown his way, Clayton suffers from the worst affliction a writer can have. He can no longer write. Nice and hot. Just the way you like it. Beth, I'm trying to work here. It's still not coming, is it? No, it's not coming. I'm a serious novelist. I'm not a romance writer. Should never have taken this assignment. But Dean says if you just get back in circulation, Beth, then... Dean's an agent. He's, he's not a writer. He doesn't have to crank out this garbage. And under a pseudonym, no less. Constance Lovebird. What, what kind of name is that, anyway? Sounds like a sexually transmitted disease. Maybe a walk would help. Or going to the library, something to distract yourself. Beth, you know the only way I can work is without distractions. I have to stay right here until this block goes away. Well, what if it doesn't? You know, I don't mind working these extra shifts, but with all the bills... Oh, great. As if I don't feel enough pressure here. Clayton, I am not the enemy. I am your wife. You don't know what it's like, Beth. Facing this blank screen. Writing something that's not from the heart. I mean, look, look, look at this garbage. Only passion could unlock the secrets of her longing. What do I know about passion and longing? You used to know a lot about them. You know, these last seven years haven't been easy for me either. But I still believe in you, Clayton. You will get your inspiration back. You've just got to have faith. Faith.
Hi, uh, Dean. What a nice surprise. No, 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 it's not too late. I was just uh, working. Clayton, are you blocked again? <laughs> blocked? No way. The fact is, I, I, I'm, on, I'm on a roll here. Yeah, that's what you said about the Esquire article last year and about that review for the Times the year before. Trust me, Dean. We're talking book awards here. Forget that highbrow stuff. This is a romance novel. It's got to be steamy. The house frows that read this stuff want fantasy, not art. Clayton. Fantasy, right. So where are we? Last chapter, I hope? Yeah. Yeah, uh, just, just doing a final polish. Look. Clayton, I put my rep on the line just to get you this gig. Now, I want a first draft of that on my desk Monday. M Monday? Well yeah, that gives you five days. But then you've already had four months and two extensions, right? I mean, 140 pages. How hard can it be? Not to worry, Dean. It's as good as done. Thank God you're alive. I, I saw you across the courtyard. The knife, I was afraid you'd... you'd... Killed myself? If only I could. What's wrong? What happened? He left me. I gave him my whole heart and soul, and he... If only I could write like you paint. You wouldn't want to. It's too painful. That's where passion comes from. Without passion, you have... You've lost it, haven't you? Maybe I can help you find it. Look, uh, I, I, I shouldn't be here. But you yeah. are. I'm also married. Anyway, you seem to be uh, okay. Please don't leave. I don't want to be alone. I'm afraid of what I might do if I'm left alone. Look, I don't even know your name. Faith. My name is Faith. Faith. I know, it's old-fashioned. No, no, it's, it's just the, my wife. Mac. Sleep it off somewhere else. Come on, you heard me scram. What time is it? Where is she? What are you talking about? The woman who lives here. When I when I came over last night, there were uh, there, there were candles and, and paintings. Look, pal. Nobody's lived here since that wacko committed suicide three years ago. What? She was found with a wrist cut. Right where you were sleeping. And they stared at each other, the candlelight undressing their thoughts, and then with tears still in her eyes, she pulled him down to the floor. 
I've got to admit, Clayton, I didn't think you had it in you. But this first chapter, whew, if the rest is half as juicy. Dean, Dean, listen to me. I, I made love to a, a strange woman last night. I knew you were getting help from someplace. What's that supposed to mean? You remember that little grad student you did the horizontal mambo with when you started darkness at morning? Dean, th this is different. This is crazy. This, this woman I slept with, she died three years ago. Come again? Her name was Faith. The janitor told me that a woman named Faith killed herself in that apartment over there. Clayton, I don't care if she had three legs and blue skin. You keep riding this hot, and I'm going to make you a very rich man. What was that about hot? You should be very proud of your husband, Bev. He's got that old magic back. See? I told you, darling, you just had to have faith. And a little inspiration. I've got to get going. Clayton, keep up the good work. And don't let those creative juices back up. Clayton, you always let me read your stuff. No, no, it's not ready yet. Hello? Hello? Wrong number, I guess. Don't answer it. Clayton, what's the matter? You're acting like a crazy man. Look, I've got a deadline. I can't have any distractions. All right, Clayton, who is she? What are you talking about? The woman you're sleeping with, the one you're trying to hide from me. Beth, I swear. She's a neighbor, isn't she? Where is she, Clayton? What apartment is she in? It's not what you think. It's what you always say. I am sick of it, Clayton. I am sick of the lies, the cheating. For seven years, I have supported you. God knows I've tried to be understanding, and what do I get in return? Heartache. The last time you were unfaithful, I looked the other way. I pretended nothing had happened. What a fool I was to think you could change. Damn it, Clayton, look at me. The truth, Clayton. No more lies. Bev, I swear to you, I haven't slept with another living soul. my feet and then toss me aside like you did that cloying little wife of yours? Leave her out of this. She was no good for you. She always held you back. Stop it. A nurse? A caretaker? What you need is a soulmate, a partner. I can help you. Shut up. Give you the passion to create. Shut up! You need me, darling. No. It's my wife I need. I know that now. Then why don't you tell her yourself? No, 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 no. I can't wait till Friday. I, I need my number changed now. As in today. Oh, make sure it's unlisted. All right. Beth, I thought you already going to work. But I can't leave my wife, he whispered. Yes, you can. 
I can give you the passion she can't, she moaned, as she guided his hungry fingers beneath her sheer black negligee. Wait a second. I didn't write that. How does it end, Clayton? Beth, no, don't tell me. I already know. My hand to God, I swear. I, I've, I've never seen this stuff before. No, of course not. It was your little ghost writer, Constance Loveburn. I hope you two will be very happy together. Bev, Bev, wait. Okay. It's true. I saw her crying. I thought she was going to kill herself. So I went over to help. One thing led to another. I don't want to hear no, this. No, you've got to. This woman, she, she won't leave me alone now. She, she's out of her mind. You're she's... plagiarizing. I've already seen that movie. Except this is real, Bev. But with a twist that even I couldn't write. The woman is dead. She's been dead for three years. Oh, I see. Well, that explains everything. Bev. Talk about writer's block. Can't even come up with a creative lie anymore. Bev, I swear to you, it's, it's the truth. Please don't leave me. Do me one last favor, Clayton. When you write that ending, don't make the wife beg him to come back. Give her some dignity. Finish the book, you hear me? My words, my passion, you can't touch me anymore. Is that you talking or is Constance still polishing her dialogue? Dean? Yeah, who else? Look, Clayton, I just thought I should warn you. I know, I know, I know, the book's due today. Don't worry, I just printed it out. Where do you read this ending? Well, that's great, but I'm talking about your wife. She just called me from work. Wouldn't leave me alone till I told her where the girl lived. What? You know Ghost Woman, the imaginary playmate? What's the difference? You and I both know she's not real, right? Beverly! Beverly, get out of there! Clayton. You came to rescue me. How romantic. Beth, what are you doing here? Where, where is she? Oh, don't worry. She's around somewhere. Bev, I know I made a terrible mistake, and I realize how much I love you. I've, I've been so wrapped up in myself that I, I blocked, blocked you out. I pushed you away. It's, it's going to be different now. I've even changed my story to prove it. Listen, listen to this. As he walked away, she burst into tears. Don't go back to her, she pleaded. Your wife doesn't deserve you. But her only answer was the echo of his footsteps as he disappeared into the sunrise the prodigal husband returning to the light of his life. So what do you think, Beth? Sorry, Clayton. Wrong ending. I told him to stay away. But the guy wouldn't listen. How do you think this happened? Maybe a mugger. Maybe he did it himself. Come on. How could he slash his own face like that? Hell, I don't know. I'm not a writer. As he walked away, his wife burst into tears. Please don't leave me, she pleaded. But her only answer was the echo of footsteps as he disappeared into the sunrise with the light of his life, with faith.
A good author tries to put something of his self into his work, tries to imprint each and every page with his style, his very heart and soul, or as in the case of Clayton Wagner, his life itself.